most um, most of the important physics theory uh, after the Newton and also theory from Coulomb, um, Hertz, and also the Maxwell. They think that the building of the physics uh, is complicated and uh, they want to simplify and they uh, summarize a very easy theory and uh, we have the Newton theory and the Maxwell's equation. So everything is complete only there are two questions cannot be solved. One of the question is what's the speed of light? The speed of light is very fast and uh, it's very hard to measure, but we have, we have tools to measure at that time. And uh, after people know the speed of light, um, but they don't know which reference this speed is related to. So, um, the question put forward by many scientists. And the first guy solved this problem is Einstein. He put forward the special relativity in 1905, and then he summarized other phenomena and put forward the general relativity as 1916. And these theories are very important at, the, at, the, at that time, and it's a very huge breakthrough. And many people don't believe his theory because it's very weird, contradict humans' common knowledge. But um, since now, many experiment or phenomena in the universe um, has been observed and uh, support Einstein's theory. So I'm going to introduce the special relativity and some derivation and help you understand why this is interesting and important. So the question, and begin with what's the reference of the light speed. From the Maxwell's equation, and people know the speed of the propagation of EM waves, electromagnetic waves, is a constant, and the value is three times 10 to the eight meter per second. Um, this is the speed of uh, the value of speed, but the question is what's the reference? Of this value. We know when we talk about speed, we have to pick up a stationary a frame, the reference. If there's no reference, the value of speed uh, doesn't make, make, make sense or is meaningless. So you can think about that. If we have two cars, the red car and the blue car, they have the speed of V1 and the V2 respectively, and uh, the the frame we choose is a ground. If the ground is stationary, then the car, the left car has speed of V1 and the right car has a speed of V2. And if the V1 and the V2 are, are, are equal, then um, these two cars are relatively stationary. If you stand on one car, you look at the other car, you will find that the other car doesn't move. So we have relative speed for each car is V1 minus V2. If the speed direction is opposite, then if you stand on the V1, then you look at the V2, and the speed for the right car will be V1 plus V2. So that means the speed is relative to something. We need a reference. If the reference um, is determined, then the value of the speed is meaningful. If there's no reference, when we only talk about the value of speed, like the speed of light, we don't know the reference, then we don't know if the speed is fast or slow. But when we talk about the speed of the light, we don't know where the reference is. The C equal to three times 10 to the eight meter per second is a calculation result. We don't know where is uh, uh, the, the frame or where is the reference. And also, this speed is too fast. From the number, we, we find that it's 10 to the, to the 8. It's very fast. If you check the, the speed of the limit in the highway, it's uh, one, 100 mile or 70 mile per, uh, per hour. This is very fast, and if you check the speed of the plane, it goes to the 100 miles per hour or the 1,000 miles per hour. It's 
much smaller than the speed of light. So we cannot find an object can moving so fast. And also, when people study the acoustic wave, the acoustic wave like sound can traveling in the uh, in the in the air, in the water, or in the solid. And the acoustic wave travel needs um, need a medium. If there's no medium, there's a vacuum. The acoustic wave cannot travel. So we don't know if the electromagnetic wave can travel in the vacuum or not, or uh, if the the light can travel in the space, in the in the air, in the water. They should follow the acoustic waves um, result. Here I have the result here. This is acoustic sound wave speed. The speed has a relation with the stiffness of the medium and the density of the medium. If the acoustic wave travel in the solid, in the solid, then um, the stiffness is here. This is modulus. Modulus is a mechanical property to describe the stiffness of the subject. And the denominator is a density, density of the solid. So that means if the solid or the meteor is very stiff or um, not dense, less dense, then the acoustic wave can travel fast. So if we want to get a very big or the faster traveling, we need a stiff object and less dense uh, object. But if we check the speed of light, three times 10 to the eight, we need a meteor that could be very stiff, very stiff, but not dense. How can we find the object that is stiff, but the density is very low? So nothing we can find in the, on the Earth or in our daily life can find an object that has a very large uh, modulus and a very small density. So that's weird. We call the meteor for the light traveling is a ghostly wind. So the wind means the object is not dense, but the ghost, we, we are talking about the, the hardness of the object. So we want to find um, the reference of the light, and also we want to know if the light can travel without the media. Okay. So if this value is correct, we should have a reference, but we don't have a reference. Then people had a hypothesis. They said there exists an absolute stationary frame, an absolute stationary frame. This frame is called ether. So the name, the frame ether. They said everything could be um, relative to the ether and has a relative speed. And the ether is like a web uh, spreading in the universe. And uh, if we talk about speed, then every speed should be relative to the ether. So ether is stationary. So can we find a free or can we find um, an object like ether that could be stationary always and at any time, any place. So to find the ether, people can do the experiment. So the first guy who designed the experiment is called Michelson. The Michelson used interferometer to measure the speed of light. So if he finds the speed of light change with different frame, then he can use the difference of the speed of light to determine the speed of ether. If he knows speed of ether, then he will uh, make a point that uh, every, everything in the universe is relative to that stationary frame. So this is how he do the experiment. 
um, there is a light source. The light source um, here, they can use candle or use a bomb or they use a lamp. The lamp shine a light and hit a half half mirror. Half of the light reflect, half of the light transmit, go through the mirror and goes a wrong trip, reflect by the mirror. Then there's two paths of the light encountered at the mirror and the, the down light, the downside of light goes through the mirror and travel in this way. And this side of the, of the light goes through, uh, reflect by this mirror and goes down. So this two paths of light will encounter in this path and we put a photo detector to measure the intensity of, of, the, um, of the group of the light. There are two paths of light. The light is a wave, we know. It's an electromagnetic wave. So the two paths of the light is going to interfere. If uh, one path of light and the other path of light have the same face, here have the same face. So if the, um, the peak meets the other light's peak and the trough meets the other light's the trough, then you will get an interference, strong interference. So the interference pattern gets strong. But if the two paths of the light are out of phase, so the peak meets the trough and the trough meets with the, the peak, then the interference is weak. So under the photo detector, we can find that this is a light source. The light goes through here. The mirror reflects in this way and, and go through in this way, then reflect back, then go to the detector, reflect back, go to the detector. So this is a detector. Under the detector, you will see the interference pattern, the ring and the ring. So if the light path change and the phase change, the phase difference change, you will see the pattern change. So at the beginning, you will see a, a spot in the middle, then a ring, a ring, a ring. If the lap has changed and the face change, you will see a hole in the middle, then ring, ring, ring. So we can use the pattern to determine the light pass change and also use a pattern to get the idea um, what's the speed of the light in this case. Okay, so the, uh, the derivations are here. And um, I try to simplify the uh, the derivation and the calculation. And you don't need to remember this calculation, but the idea is, is the same. So for the uh, for this pass, this pass you will find that if suppose the ether has a speed relative to the ground is V. So this is the speed of ether relative to the ground. And the C is the speed of light relative to the ether. And the U is the speed of light relative to the ground. Relative to the ground. Okay, so when we do the experiment, we want to know the speed of light relative to the ground. So when um, at the beginning, we can assume the speed of ether relative to the ground go to the right. Then if light goes in this way, then uh, we will find the speed of light uh, relative to the ground is C minus V. If it goes to the opposite direction, the speed of the light relative to the ground is C plus V. Okay, this is easy. And the time for the wrong trip will be L1, uh, L1 over C minus V plus L1 over C plus V. Okay, this is easy. And when light travel to the up, then goes down, for this one, and the speed of light relative to the ground is a little bit complicated, but um, I show you, if the speed of light relative to the ether is in this way, and the speed of ether relative to the ground is in this way, then the speed of light 
relative to the ground goes up. Okay, this is a vector um, submission. And also you can say the subtraction of the vector is equal to, to a triangle row. So we have the speed of light relative to the ground is square root c square minus v square. So for up pass and the down pass, they share the same speed. So we have the 2L2 over the speed of U. So then we have the C square minus V square. Okay, so in this case, we have the traveling time for the round trip on the right to the left, that's a T1. The round trip goes down and goes back is T2. Then we get the traveling time difference. The traveling time difference will be this uh, equation. And to make this um, easy to understand, we times the speed of light, and we get the traveling distance difference. That's the capital D. Okay. Then we spin this interferometer 90 degree. So at the beginning, we have L1 in the right, L2 to the up. Then we spin 90 degree. So we have L1 in this one. L2 in this one. Just now we have the difference of the time, traveling time is equal to this one. After we spin 90 degree, we have this one. So we just change the denominator. Right? We change the denominator and the numerator is the same. Then we have uh, the time difference before the spinning and after the spinning. Then we do the difference. Then we get the difference of traveling distance as a difference of traveling distance. And after the simplification, we have this result. And from the expectation, we know the C is very large. This is what we calculate three to the eight. And the V is the speed of ether relative to the ground. Then we expect this is also very, very big. Because um, if this is a smaller, then the spinning speed of the Earth, as the Earth is spinning, and self-spinning, and the speed of the equator is very fast. Um, but we we think at that time um, the speed of ether should be larger than the, the spinning speed on the equator, because if the speed is very small, then people can can feel about that. But we can't feel about any ether in the space. So we believe and the speed, it should be very large. So everything is large. If we have L1 and L2, the length of each arm, the length of each arm is around 10 meter. By using multiple reflection, we can get the, the value to the 10 meter. Then we should see the pattern difference. The pattern should be, um, be viewed after spinning and before the rotation, after the rotation, then we should say the pattern is different. But the result is surprise. No matter how they spin the interferometer, or no matter where they put the interferometer, or how, they, uh, how the orientation of the interferometer is, they don't see the pattern change. The pattern is constant. If the pattern doesn't change, that means the delta D is zero. Then the only thing could be zero is V equal to zero. So the, uh, the speed of ether is zero. But we know if we stand on the earth, different place has a different spinning speed. So if we move the interferometer uh, to other place, the spinning speed should be different. But no matter where they put the interferometer is, they still get the, the, the pattern doesn't change. So that means the ether may not exist. So inter, uh, interference pattern don't change and the ether doesn't exist. How can we explain the speed of the light? How can we see the reference of the speed of light. So um, this question um, bothered many scientists. 
and no one knows idea. Uh, but in 1905, a miracle year, uh, Albert Einstein published a paper. This is a breakthrough paper and hit um, very um, many scientists and at that time. At that time, he's only 26 years old. So if you want to be famous, if you want to make something big, if you want to get big news, do that when you are young. So at that time, he just gets the PhD at the University of Zurich and publish this paper. And on that paper, uh, if I don't remember it wrong, the author is only Albert Einstein. He used this paper and he talked with his advisor and he his advisor doesn't believe his theory. So his advisor said, don't put my name on the paper. So the paper only has one author, this Albert Einstein. In that paper, he uh, used two hypotheses. These two hypotheses is very important and explain what he's thinking. The first one is weird. He said the speed of the light in the vacuum is independent of the motion of all of observers. That means no matter what uh, reference you pick up, the speed of light doesn't change. Even you're traveling with the speed of the light, you stand on the light with the speed of the light, and then you look at the other light, the speed is also three times 10 to the eight meter per second. So that means you never find the light is stationary even you have the same speed on the light. So the second one is, uh, is easy to understand. The law of physics are the same, no matter uh, what reference you pick up. So the second one is easy to understand, but the first one is weird. How can we see the speed of light is independent of the reference? But if the hypothesis is true, we will derive many weird conclusions. So the first conclusion is that two things happen in the same time, um, doesn't mean the other observers find the two things happen at the same time. So we call the relativity of simultaneity. Um, you can think about it in this way. If you have a running train, you stand in a car and this car um, is moving with the speed relative to the ground. In the middle of the car, there is a light. This light shines to the both sides of the car. And on the each side, there is a person use a timer to calculate um, how long does it take for the light to travel from the middle of the car to the end of the car. If you stand in the car, you look at the light, each person should feel the same time because the distance is the same. So the time they receive the light is equal. So the difference of time is zero. So each person receives the light at the same time. But if you stand on the ground, you stand here, and when you look at this event, you find things are different because the left guy moving in this way, the right guy moving in this way, but the light to the left guy move in the opposite direction. The light relative to the right guy move in the same direction. So that means it takes longer to reach the right guy than to reach the left guy. So if we calculate the distance, that will be the time to the left guy will be left will be the half of the length of the car over the speed so that will be c plus v and the time it takes to reach the right guy will be half of the length of the car over the c minus v so that means the left guy the time doesn't equal to the time to the right guy. So there will be a time difference. So in a word, if you pick up different frame, you will observe different result. So two things happen in the same 
same time doesn't mean it happens at the same time for other three. We call this relativity of same time. So the same time doesn't mean the same time. Okay, this is weird. Next one is called time dilation. So here is a result. So on the earth, on the ground, you can think this is stationary and you have a floor, you have a ceiling, you shine a light from the floor to the ceiling, then reflect back. So how long does it take the light to travel for the wrong trip? Suppose the distance from the floor to the ceiling is d non, and the speed of light is c, then the time will be d non over c. Okay. That's easy. Kindergarten math. Okay. But if you travel on the on the rocket, the rocket has a speed of v here. You will find that the ceiling and the floor is not is not stationary. They uh, move back because you have a speed. If you stand on the rocket and look at the ceiling, then the light path should be like this. Goes up, but with uh, X component, then goes back. When it goes back, they are not at the same coordinate. So if we still calculate the light, the time interval of the traveling for the light for a wrong trip, you will get the T time equal to the D, D is a left path over the C. And for the wrong trip over times two. Okay. Then because D non and the D is not equivalent, then you get the different time. The time is different, then the question is, which one is faster, which one is slower? You will get that the T is larger than the T non. And we also have relation between D and the D non. This is a D non, this is a D, and this side is VT. So we can use ge uh, geometry to get the relation between D and the D non. So we have D equal to square root D non square plus V square T square. So with this three equation, we get the relation of T in the reference frame and also the t in the stationary frame. t non is the time in the stationary frame. Stationary frame. And this is the time in the moving frame. So the time you measured at different frame are different. And the result has a relation of this one. So this is a relation. Then you will find that in the stationary, the time is smaller than the, station, uh, than the time in the moving frame. So it takes 10 seconds for the event in the stationary frame, but if you are moving, it takes more time um, to, reach the, to, to, to reach to the end. So that time, the time delay, that means the time delay. If the time delay, you can think about that. Um, it takes one year for me to finish this, uh, this event, but it will take me uh, 10 years if someone is standing in other moving free. So if you traveling with a rocket and travel back round trip, then you will find that you become younger because the time for the um, for the running rocket uh, makes the time delays, makes the time go slow. Then after you travel background and, and make a wrong trip and back to the earth, you will find that your time is getting very slow and you become younger. So this is uh, the time dilation. This is a very weird conclusion, but this is confirmed by using the experiment uh, of the uh, of the item, they use uh, the gamma rays to detect some items, and they get uh, the theory should be considered the uh, relativity of the time. And if time is is relevant to the reference, 
the length should be relevant. For example, we know the length has a relation with time, time times the speed, right? At a different time, at different speeds, if the time are relative, the length should be relative. So the length is here. We have the relation of the length in a stationary frame and the length in a moving frame. And they have um, also the, the, the relation. But you might have questions why um, we didn't feel the difference. If we were wrong, if we travel with a plane, we travel with a car, but we didn't feel any time delay or we didn't feel any lens contraction. But why this is true? Because in our daily life, the speed we can reach is very low. So the speed, you can think about the, the plane is around 1000 miles per hour, or uh, you can go to the very fast, go to 2000, that is, uh, um, the limit speed we can reach. But think about the, the speed of light. It's around 380 meter per second. So this is much larger. C is much larger than the speed we can reach. So this is around to one. Then we have L approximately equal to L now in our daily life. So we don't feel any difference. So if we can make a rocket that the speed is very large, close to the C, for example, 0.5 C, 0.9 C, then you will see the difference, the huge difference. So, um, but we don't see the relativity um, on the Earth because the speed we can reach is very slow, okay? And until now, we talk about the relativity of the time, the relativity of the length. You will find that if you are moving, the time becomes slower and the length becomes more. And also, this is just a two weird conclusions. A more weird conclusion is the relativity of the light, the relativity of the color. Right? If everything could be, um, could be a relativity, and everything is relevant to the frame, the color should be relevant to the frame, right? Um, let's see this. Um, we call the Doppler effect. Suppose there is a speaker in the middle and the speaker uh, says something and the, the sound move in this way and also move in this way, but the speaker has a speed. The speaker moving this way. This is the speed of the speaker. And for the right lady, and she will feel that the frequency increase because if the speed is in this way, if the moving speed in this way, then uh, the wavelength is compressed by the speed. And you will find the distance from peak to peak is compressed. But if you check, uh, if you check the other direction, like this, and you will find the peak to peak distance is uh, stretched because uh, the wave travel in this way, but the speaker goes in this way. So the wave is uh, stretched. And the left guy is going to feel uh, the frequency goes lower. So on the right, you will get a high frequency but on the left, you will get a low frequency. This is called the Doppler effect. Now I change the speaker as a, a light source. If there's a light source, then you will find that in this direction, the person will find the frequency is high, but in the left part, the person will feel the frequency goes very low. And we know from the spectrum of the visible light, if we have a spectrum and I have red, yellow, green, blue, and violet, purple, you will get that the wavelength is 
large on the left wavelength is large than the wavelength on the right. So that means if the wavelength change, the color will change. So on the right, you will see high frequency but low wavelengths. So on the right, you will get a blue shift. We call this blue shift. It's turned to smaller. The wavelength turns smaller. But on the left, the, we call this red shift. That means the wavelengths become longer. We can use this phenomenon to determine the speed of the star. So if you stand on Earth, you see the Earth, and you use a telescope to look at, to watch another star. This star is going to radiate the light, and you receive the light, and you find if the color has a red shift, that means the speed of the star moving backward you. But if you find the, the light, the radiation light has a blue shift, then you can determine that this star is moving towards you. And you can use the change of the color to determine the speed of the star and the relation here. And the lambda is a wavelength. And lambda prime is a wavelength for the moving free. So if the um, both wavelengths you know, you can determine the speed. So this is called the relativity of the color, the Doppler effect. And what's more, you can think about the mass is also re uh, relevant to the frame. If the, the mass um, is close to the speed of the light, if it, the traveling speed is moving close to the C, the V go to the C, the mass will increase. So the relation here, the mass increase and go to the infinity. And this relation is derived by the Einstein. And you can think about that, if there's no momentum, the P is a momentum. If there's no momentum, and we'll cancel this one, then the energy of the particle or object is equal to the mass times the C squared. So this is called Einstein's um, energy mass relation. So it's a very famous equation. And you can think about that if um, the object doesn't move, then the energy is equal to this. If the object is moving, we have to plus the momentum term. Okay, this is mass, the relativity of the mass. Then another thing I'm going to discuss is the general relativity. This is a very um, famous theory, but I show you the result. Because of the general relativities, um, we have the gravitational waves. And this is a um, very important theory um, predicted by Albert Einstein. And um, in the 2015, this is the first time that people detect the gravitational wave and everybody get excited. And at that time, uh, Einstein's theory is confirmed um, by the theory at the first time. Okay, so um, this is what I'm talking about today, the uh, relativity, special relativity and general relativity. But I think we still have 10 minutes. Let's uh, finish the quiz. You can find the quiz on the um, 